Good day everyone. In this video, we will be discussing Descartes Rule of Sign. So in our discussion today, you will learn how helpful Descartes Rule of Sign in finding the zeros of our polynomial function. So let's try to find out who is the man behind this rule of sign. The man behind Descartes Rule of Sign is no other than René Descartes. René Descartes is a French philosopher, scientist, and at the same time, mathematician. He discovered analytic geometry, and he also made significant contributions to the theory of equations, and that includes the rule of signs. The rule of sign is helpful in finding the positive and negative roots of our equations. So the court rule of signs says that if we have the p of x, which is a polynomial function with real coefficients, then the number of positive real zeros or roots of p of x equals to zero is either equal to the number of variations in sign of p of x or is less than this number by a positive even integer. What does this mean? We will discuss an example later. And for us to be able to get the number of negative real zeros or roots of the p of x which is equal to zero it's actually either equal to the number of variations in sign of p of negative x or is less than this number by a positive even integer well by the way what do we mean by variations in sign when we say variations in sign it's a pair of successive coefficients with opposite sign take note of that we have the first example list all the possible combination of zeros so given this polynomial function, we will identify how many were positive zeros, how many were negative zeros, do we have imaginary zeros or zero roots here, and you should also know how to identify the total number of zeros. The first thing that we will do here is to identify first the total number of zeros. Since the highest exponent here is 3 or the degree of this function is on its third degree, meaning the total number of zeros is equal to 3. So to identify the number of positive zeros and the number of negative zeros, so when we say variations in sign, this is a pair of successive coefficients with opposite sign. So how are we going to identify the variations in sign? Let's take this f of x equals to x cubed plus 7x squared plus 14x plus 8. So let's identify the sign of each term. Take note that before you do that, your polynomial function must be arranged in decreasing power of x, regardless if there is a missing term. So for x cubed, the sign here is positive. For 7x squared, the sign here is positive. For 14x, the sign is also positive. And for 8, this sign is also positive. So, you will see that we have no opposite sign here. That means we have no variation in sign. So, we have no positive zeros. And that only means that it would be useless if we try out positive values of x as the zero of your function. Because according to the Descartes rule of sign, we have no positive zeros in this given polynomial function. Let us proceed to the number of negative zeros. How are we going to identify the number of negative zeros? In the definition a while ago, we can identify the negative zeros by counting the number of variation in sign of p of negative x. That means the value of x is negative. So let's just substitute the value of x which is negative here. We have negative x cubed, 7 times negative x squared, 14 times negative x plus 8. And in simplifying that one, it will give you negative x cubed plus 7x squared minus 14x plus 8. And from this simplified polynomial, we will be identifying the sign of each term. So the sign of negative x cubed is negative, plus 7x squared is positive, minus 14x is negative, and then positive 8 is positive. And then let's count the opposite sign or the variations in sign. So we have here negative and then positive, that's one variation. Next to that, we have positive and then negative, another variation in sign. And then we have negative and then positive, another variation of sign. So let's count the variation in sign. 
So we have 1, 2, 3, meaning we have number of negative zeros, which is equal to 3. Since the total number of zeros is equal to 3, the combination of number of positive zeros, negative, and then imaginary must be equal to 3. So meaning, if we have 0 positive zeros and then 3 negative zeros, automatically, we have no imaginary or zero roots here. Oh, wait, this is just the first combination. Let's try to identify the second combination. Why do we have the second combination? It is because the number of negative zeros is equal to 3, and there's an even number there. And let's flash that rule of sign. We have the number of negative real zeros or roots of p of x is equal to 0, is either equal to the number of variations in sign of p of negative x, or is less than this number by a positive even integer. So it says there that we could have another combination, and that is actually less than this number by a positive even integer. The even integer there is 2. So we deduct 2 from 3, there we got 1. And then number of positive zeros will still be 0 because this is actually based on variation. So automatically, there will be imaginary or zero roots here. We might have two imaginary or zero roots in the second combination. So still the total number of zeros here is equal to 3. In the first combination, this means that we have no positive values of x or no positive roots, but we have three negative roots or negative zeros and we have no imaginary or zero roots. For the second combination, we still have no positive values of x or positive zeros, but we could have one negative zero or negative roots, and there could be two imaginary or zero roots. You would be able to identify the combination if you try to solve for this. Meaning, if you already have the possible combination, it would be useless to try positive values of x. Just go directly with the negative values of x and try to find out which of those are the zeros of your function. So let's try to discuss another example so you will understand better on how to list all the possible combination of zeros. Let us discuss the second example. So the same thing, let us list all the possible combination of zeros given this polynomial function. So let's identify the combination of positive zeros, negative zeros, imaginary or zero roots, and let's also identify the total number of zeros that we have for this polynomial function. So to identify the total number of zeros, just look at the degree of the function. The highest degree here or the highest exponent is equal to 5. That means we have total number of zeros which is equal to 5. Let's identify the number of positive zeros from the given f of x. Let's write the sign of each term. We have here positive, negative, positive, positive, and then negative. Then the same thing, let's count the opposite sign here or the variations in sign. We have here positive and then negative. That's one variation. Next to that, we have negative and then positive, another variation. And then we have here positive and positive no variation and then we have the next one is positive and the negative another variation so if we count the number of positive zeros here based on the variations in sign we have one two three and that's equal to three so for the negative zeros we just have to substitute the value of x which is negative so we have here f of negative x and then just substitute negative x to the values of x so we have here negative x raised to 5 plus 3x cubed plus x squared minus 2x minus 1. Take note that before you get all the sign of each term, you must simplify first your f of negative x. So we have here the sign negative, positive, positive, negative, and then negative. And then let's count the number of variations here. We have negative and then positive, one variation positive and positive we have no variation here we have positive and the negative that's another variation and then negative then negative no variation if we count the number of variations here that means the total number of negative zeros here is equal to 2 so since we have three positive zeros 
and two negative zeros, a total of five already, it automatically we have zero imaginary or zero roots. This means that we have no imaginary and no zero roots. Now, because we have to list all the possible combination, we will be identifying another combination. So, for the first one, we have to deduct an even integer to the number of positive zeros here. So, the even number here is 2. So, we have 3 minus 2. That's equal to 1. Say, for example, you work on the positive zeros. You don't touch anything or just copy the number of negative zeros here so we just have two here since we have one positive zero and two negative zero we still have an excess which is two automatically it will go to number of imaginary or zero roots so that's for the second combination for the third combination this time you will not touch the number of positive zero so from the original Variations in sign, you just have to copy 3 there. And then let's work on the number of negative 0. Let's deduct an even integer here. So the even integer here is 2. So 2 minus 2 is 0. So we might not have negative zeros here. So what will happen to the excess? It will automatically go to the number of imaginary or 0 roots. So we have the first combination. We could have 3 positive zeros. Two negative zeros and no imaginary or zero roots for the second combination we could have one positive zero and two negative zeros and two imaginary or zero roots so for the third combination we could have three positive zeros no negative zeros and two imaginary or zero roots this means that these are the combinations of the values of x that you will be looking for. So, that's all for the second example. Now, try this on your own. List all the possible combination of zeros of g of x equals 15x raised to 4 plus 20x cubed minus 25x squared minus 10x. The answer here will be flushed on the next video. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. If you haven't subscribed yet to this channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button to update you on my next videos.